it's not your surfing ability, it's like how aerated the water was that you basically, you go down, you wouldn't come up for a long, long time. Um, so it is just getting confident in the waves that you want to surf. And it's not going like from six foot to 25 foot, which some guys do, which is madness because you'll see when they wipe out and they come up if they want it or not. You like it, it, it'll scare the living shit out of them. Whereas if they go off and they train and they they do. Hello and welcome to the UK Surf Show. We are your hosts. I'm Pete. And I'm Leighton. On this episode, we speak to Peter Conroy, North Core team rider. And big, big wave surfer. <laughs> yes, huge waves. Huge waves in Ireland, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think this episode may be the most fucking swearing we've had on <laughs> <so far>. Irish <laughs> people can swear really, really well. <laughs> can't they um really nice guy though um i don't think we've laughed so much either he had us in stitches didn't he yeah really nice guy really funny really down to earth and um yeah really really fun to chat to um before we get into this don't forget if you head over to north core you can get your 15 percent off by using the code ssuk15 and that will get you 15 percent off anything you order just jump into the swear fest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, my name is Peter Conroy. I live on the west coast of Ireland in a little town called Milltown Malbay. Um, and I surf a little bit. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> a little. I surf a little and a, quite a little, but a lot of waves. A, a lot. A big wave. Yeah, that's all I've done this year is surfed two days of big waves. That's it. Sorry, in the last, in the last seven months, I've surfed once big waves oh so, really yeah yeah so i kind of explain you're like surf a little bit is a bit of an understatement isn't it it's um you're like it's well like 60 foot waves isn't it is that is that the ah, it's as big as big as i can find in the west coast of ireland that's we'll put it that way anything any big big swells that come in i, I try to get on it but with covid and with the club we run and with my job um, and with the 5k lockdown, I can't really travel to surf anything that I want to surf. Um, and basically just adhering to the rules. So, yeah. yeah. Has, there, so, has there been any major swells that, that you've missed? Oh, don't, don't talk to me right at this moment, <laughs> right at this moment. Uh, I'm missing some of the best surf. Yes. Um, a couple of weeks ago as well. Yeah. Massive surf came in and I just had to like, ah. Oh, I've had conversations with like some of the lads were ringing from up north because they are oh, coming down. And I was like, oh, please don't. I was just like, I don't care if you do, but it's like, like they don't like a lot of people on the, the West Coast. They're not seeing what COVID is doing to families. Like I'm seeing it. People are dying in my ambulance from COVID. I'm seeing what it's doing to families. And I was saying, all you're really being asked to do is really stay within your 5K. And like every surfer is not adhering to that. And I have unfollowed so many of my friends at the moment on, and it's not because I don't want to be their friends. It's just on my Instagram. If I see their story of them surfing in a spot, they shouldn't be, I, it just gets on my nerves. So I'm just like, delete it. Don't have to see it. And then I'll, when, when all this is over, I'll follow them back again. But it's just kind of for my mental health. I've just basically said, no, I'm not dealing with this. I'm not looking at this. And so one of that says, oh, I just come off social media. And I was like, no, I don't need to come off it. I just need to not see what, they're putting out because i enjoy everything else i look at it on instagram or on facebook yeah we same sort of thing as well because we we've said we're not traveling due to yeah. the restrictions and everything and we've seen people still traveling and it kind of puts you in the in the flat frame of mind of what the fuck are you doing you know yeah. it's a simple rule yeah it's one rule for one and a, another rule for another um yeah and and I think it, and they're just like, oh sure, we're not meeting anybody, we're not doing it. It's like, yeah, but if I if I, like I live five point five kilometers from one of my surf breaks, if I go down there, like I, I break the rule by half a kilometer, and I, and I walk and I go down, yet there's ten other surfers from a town that's fifteen miles away are there. I can't surf there because I'm not going to park up and park in front of somebody else's house that they're going to get freaked out because there's loads of cars parked out in front of their house. And I'm not yeah. going to go out and socialize with 15 other people during a pandemic. Simple as that. Yeah. Um, so I've just, I've just kind of stayed at home, had fun with the family, 
done a bit of gardening, done a bit of work in the garden. And uh, like I said, I'm not missing the surf. I, like everyone goes, oh, I need surf. I need surf. It's like there's other things in life that yeah, yeah. Are, are better than surf. Like I, I don't know. You can't say that. Like I do miss it, but I've said my parents' lives are more important or my friends' lives are more important. So I'm going to stick to for a couple of months, I'm not going to surf. Yeah, that's yeah. it. We, we, as simple we, as feel that. It, we feel exactly the same. Like what you said about parking outside other people's houses, it's we're, we're an hour and a half away from what we would call our local spots. So I suppose the best way to describe it is our regular spot. Uh, and that's Saunton Sands down in North Devon. Oh, and, I surfed it. I surfed it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, what? How did you find it? See it coming from like an island where uh, the, uh, the waves are huge. Well, uh, well, I, the thing is, I went to co- I went to college in Coventry, All right. and one of the years I lived in Morton Marsh in the fire service college, and I was lifeguarding in the pool there. And one of the managers was from down around there. Um, don't ask him his name because I forget it. And he brought me down surfing down there a few times. Yeah. Um, and that's way. That's actually before I started surfing big waves. Anyway, that's that's way back. Yeah. Well, we, we, we feel the same as what you do, that we, we not, we're not tra- traveling down to those areas because we kind of feel for the locals. We have seen on the news of people traveling down like past London all the way to the coast to go surfing and they're getting fined and stuff. But, it, it, you know, they're, they're putting everybody in danger on the way down as well. If they stop off at services and all this kind of stuff, you know, it's unnecessary trips, isn't it? It is unnecessary. Like, it's like they're like, oh, I have to surf or I have to get wet. And it's like, huh. Like I've got into walking now, and like I never walk, and it's it's just something to go clear my mind, go walk with my family, or just when I'm in Dublin, I'm in, I'm in a, I'm stuck in my van at the back of the fire station. I just walk out the gate and start walking, and walk for my last walk was 14 kilometers, and it was just kind of right, just go out and enjoy nature basically, um, yeah. and and because I can't surf, I can't do anything else, I can't even go to my friends in Dublin that I go do some rope work or do some river rescue stuff with them, and it. Because, as I said, I can't go out to 5K and you, you shouldn't really do anything that isn't really necessary. Exercise is well and good. And it, it's another thing is surfing really is an exercise. It's, it's, a, it's a, an enjoyment. Yeah. yeah. Like, like uh, people will argue with me there. Now, uh, it, some people it is exercise, but walking around the house is exercise. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We won't we won't go down this rabbit hole now. It's, it's too uh, too late in the evening. <laughs> yeah. Right, so what about um growing up in Ireland and you know um learning to surf? When when did all that happen and when when did you first start? So yeah, I was pretty late to the game. I um I started I was a swimmer. It, it started when I was about 5 or 6 started a swimming club and grew up like getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning, swimming for two hours, then cycling to school, then going back swimming in the afternoon. Um, did that for years. Um, competed nationally um, and then progressed from swimming to life-saving. We took up life-saving classes and stuff like that. And then I started um, lifeguarding on the beaches during the summer. Started in 1997. Um, some of the local beaches, like still about half an hour from my house, but local enough to that I, I know them. Um, and it was only when I started working on Spanish Point Beach, which is a, a, a pretty dangerous beach um, and would get a really good brunt of straight westerly uh, swells and southwest swells. And and I just started paddling out on the rescue board and going, oh, this is quite cool. Like never actually surfing waves before. So I had a friend there, Oshie McGrath, and I bought a board off him. Um, a six four is what I learned on, and uh, it was all downhill from then. Like, <laughs> if you're ever learning to surf, don't buy a shortboard. <laughs> um, so that went on for about three or four years of trying to surf and not realizing that I was just pissing in the wind, basically. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, but I, I managed to get it, and um, it kind of took over my life of like coming up. When, when we were lifeguarding, we was all summer, we'd try and get out and go cliff jumping or go swimming with the dolphins or go, go do some, some crack. And if there's surf, we'd all just go surf together, the lifeguards. And then in the winter, it was a different story back then. Like you probably remember, like, Jesus, you come out with claw hands. You couldn't operate properly because the wetsuits were shite. And yeah. only, only the real men actually surfed in the winter because, uh, 
you, the equipment wasn't what it was what it's like now at the moment so you suffered massively when you surfed <laughs> and yeah it was then it was i got my job in the fire brigade in 2004 after going to college for four a couple, couple of years and then coming back in lifeguarding in between all that went to new york uh went to america for almost a half a year came back went for the fire brigade got it and then i was kind of surfing like mediocre surf all the way through this now i wouldn't even class myself even anyway good um compared to my friends even they were way better than me um but then the cliffs of moher was discovered uh john and mickey smith and all the boys started surfing out there dave blount they started towing in and uh i saw it and i was just like oh that is in class um so i kind of bought in with Oshin and my, my mate Neil and we got a ski and I started going out and the two boys um they were just busy with life and jobs and stuff like that so I'd have to ski a lot of the time so I'd anytime the boys were going out with Steve Thomas and Tom Deutsch Harris and all that I just I just basically shadow them I just come out and I go out with the ski by myself and I just do safety and um I convince them to tow me in even though I was the worst surfer out there <laughs> hands down shite like I wipe out every wave but every wave made me stronger as i'd like to I, I like to say um but the one thing i came back from was like i was a basically a lifeguard i wasn't going to drown because i was a, a proper swimmer i could do like go in and rescue boards i could do whatever but a lot of the surfers weren't as strong swimmers they weren't lifeguards so it was kind of like and i was pretty proficient on the skis by then um so it was like i scratched their back and they scratched mine so um, I even was told when I was out there, when I was, the lads were catching me waves or pulling me into waves, they were like, um, Pete, you shouldn't be out here. And I was just looking at the same guy, realizing like, that guy can't even bloody swim and he's telling me I shouldn't be out here. Um, <laughs> that's a nice, so just, uh, that's going to build confidence. <laughs> oh yeah. But I like, I'd never say that to anybody. Like you give people pointers if they want to be out there and they've spent money to be out there. It's like, right, let's, you're not going to turn them away. Yeah. The wave will do that in itself. If they don't get scared by the wave or a big wipeout, you saying, oh, you shouldn't be out here, will actually be the opposite. It'd be like, fuck you. I, if I want to be out here, I'm going to be out here. So, yeah, that went on for a few years that I kept on going out and less and less I was falling. Um, I was making waves, making barrels. Um, and it was just by sure surfing, towing into the stupidest waves that you could imagine and making a few of them that I started getting better and that was it. And it was only over years and years of practice um, that we kind of got better and better. The whole, especially myself, like a lot of the lads were well able for it, but I was, I learned the hard way. <laughs> a few 30 footers on the head many, many times. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I've seen, like even watching the videos of some of the waves you surf scare the shit out of me. Yeah. They're, they're like big, heavy slaps, aren't they? Yeah, well, if you think of Riley's, like I broke my back the, fir the, the, the first time I ever surfed there. <laughs> I bro oh broke my back. My God. Yeah, so I was, um, yeah, Fergal and Tom Lowe were actually living with me at the time. And th th this was the, the time that Riley's was discovered by Mickey Smith and, uh, and the boys. And uh, they had no ski or anything. And uh, Steve Thomas and Tom Doyds were kind of towing them in at the start. And then they were, they'd get their hands on a ski and they were towing themselves and they were going down nearly every week towing. And I was like, fuck, I've got, I, I gotta go down and check this wave out. Um, this is before I was even towing and, uh, went down. Uh, oh no, I think I had a ski. Um, I went down. I was like, ah, fuck it. I'd give it a go. And <laughs> there's footage of it. Like uh, my first wave, I actually got a wave, a nice solid four, five foot wave. Um, got the wave got out everyone was woo, and it was it was brilliant and then the second wave i just got pitched and went over with the wave like i have millions of times down there but this time i landed face first on the reef oh. snapped my nose across my face it just it just curled me up into a ball and snapped my back and i was just in the water flapping when i came up i couldn't feel my legs blood everywhere from my face and uh yeah if you look at a uh, river deep mountain high it's a it's a new rescue series on ITV. Um, right. Yeah. There's actually a, it, all of it. Like I talk about my injury and how it kind of set out my 
my love for trying to keep everybody else safe and uh, the Irish Toast Surf Rescue Club. But um, oh yeah, that was an, uh, an interesting. Mickey Smith came in, and then Donuts came in to rescue me, and I'm like, oh no, because we were literally breaking my back was nothing. It was literally we were stuck in the impact zone then for about ten minutes trying to get out of there. Oh my <laughs> so, god, you were really lucky then that you didn't have any. Oh yeah, like, lasting damage, you know. That, that no, was, no, that was it. I got out onto the back, and then the boys were all kind of doughy eyed, looking at me, going what do we do? And I was looking at them going, oh, for fuck's sake, why do I have to look after myself? Um, <laughs> but I was on the back of their ski, so it just flipped over and I was like, yeah, I damaged my back. So by the time I got in, the ambulance was waiting for me, got into Ennis. And like, in my own head, I was like, ah, it's not that bad. It's just a bit of muscle damage. And when I was in the hospital, they gave me a bit of morphine and I was like, yeah, it's fine. And then when we got to the x-ray machine, they were like, oh, do you mind getting on over? So I hopped over myself onto it. Oh and, my uh, God. When she walked back in, she was she was like, "Don't move," and I was like, "Not good." So no, she goes, "No." <laughs> oh. So it was brought to a different hospital, and it was a stable fracture, so it was a, a body brace for three months. But uh, literally within a week, I was in the a nightclub doing spins on the the rigid back <laughs> brace that I had on, drunk <laughs> as a skunk. So how yeah. how long did it keep you? Out, how long did that injury keep you out of the water then? So three months, I had the body brace on. I wasn't allowed to take it off. The day I got it off, I went to the physio. I said to her, what can I do? She goes, you can do anything. The, the bone is set. Um, I said, can I go surfing? And she goes, I wouldn't go t- stupid surfing. And I was like, no, I just want to go longboard. So that day I got it off, I went longboarding. And <laughs> it was fucking amazing. <laughs> um, so, yeah. It was uh, very enjoyable, and I have to say that 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 getting back into water, getting into a wetsuit, I, I was very very stiff because my mo- back muscles had done very little. So even just catching a, a wave and lying on my belly going in was uh, ecstatic for me. So yeah, and that sounds. I mean, I've I went to a chiropractor before, and he echoed my back, and he said, you know, you've got I've got a couple of fractures in my back that have been old and healed, and I have I have a bit of back trouble now, but. I mean, what you've just described sounds absolutely horrendous. Uh, I, 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 in fairness, now I've I've damaged other things, and the back wasn't that bad because it's just a bone fracture, and it didn't it didn't affect my sensation, it didn't affect my motor skills, even my sciatica, anything like. And it was L one, so it's lower down, and I haven't had back problems since. Like like saying that I did pull my back a muscle in my back two months ago and work, but that was. Because I was lifting old people off the ground, um, but apart from that, ten years, ten years ago, I did it, and I haven't had back problem. Which I'm very lucky. Like, geez, very, very lucky. Because once your back goes, Jesus Christ, you're in a world of shit. <laughs> you can't do nothing. So well, that, that's it, isn't it? Once, uh, once anything like that happens, you're totally screwed. So, what's what's the what's the fear process there then? You know, so like like you're describing, you you pummeled into the reef when you you cooked up in a ball what goes through your head and that's happening um i was kind of worried for the lads coming in to help me because i was like no go away go away go away and i was like no peter you can't fucking kick your legs help me help me help me <laughs> and then when they come in i was like no no go away go away go away and so it was kind of once we were out of the, the impact zone it was like oh fuck it's like once i was on the ski and the sled i was like oh just get me out of here um but that's the whole thing. Like when we were doing rescues at Mully or anywhere like that, the guys coming in, like we're trained up very highly trained now. So you're kind of not worried about them coming to get you. You just have to sit there and get ready for it and, and do what you've been trained to do is get on that sled as fast as you can to get out of the impact zone or get into a, a safe working area. So, and, and we're not really worried about the injuries that they have in the impact zone. So it's just grab them and get them the hell out of there. Yeah. Um, so what's, what's the main difference? And obviously we've only ever done, you know, paddling, surfing. What's the main difference between towing in and paddling in? Paddling bigger waves or just normal paddle surfing? Oh, you know, like paddling bigger waves or to tow into bigger waves. It's just, it's just tra- training. It's, it's not even training. It's just repetition. Like people go, oh, how do you become a bigger surfer? It's like you go surf big waves. Or you go surf bigger waves. That's as simple as that. That people want to to get comfortable. It's just surfing a wave that you find a little bit bigger than you're used to, and then when you get used to it, it's it feels nothing to you, and then then you're like surfing six foot, and you look at an eight foot wave and you're like, oh, that's big, 
And it's that fear thing that you're like, all right, I better get out in a few eight foot sets. And you do, and you get used to it. And then eight foot is nothing to, and then you get to 10 and then 15, 20, 25. And then, as I said, the, it, it, the biggest swells that ever hit Ireland were still out there. And like, even that last well, the, the Connor surfed that massive wave, like that was big, but we all felt really confident out there. We were like, yeah, that's grand. But it was, wasn't breaking as normal on the, on the reef. There was so much, it, the period was so big that there was so much water moving that it was more of a kind of a, it's not your surfing ability. It's like how aerated the water was that you basically, you go down, you wouldn't come up for a long, long time. Um, so it is just getting confident in the waves that you want to surf. And it's not going like from six foot to 25 foot, which some guys do, which is madness because you'll see when they wipe out and they come up if they want it or not. You like it, it'll scare the living shit out of them. Whereas if they go off and they train and they they do some first aid, they learn the skill of driving a jet ski, just learn the basics of pickups and stuff like that. Do a rescue course, do a VHF course, learn CPR, um, all simple things like that, and learn what gear you need. Uh, inflatable vests are very accessible now. Um, where just that kind of like wearing the right equipment, like the warm gear when you go out in the middle of the winter. So, um, yeah, that's really it. Yeah. Do you feel, do you feel like a massive difference in the, you know, with in as the size of the wave gets bigger and bigger? Um, not really for me personally, not anymore. Like it's, it's you go out and it's, uh, and it's, it's, it, if, if it's 25, 30 foot, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to have fun today. But if it's it's smaller, you're like, oh, I'm going to have loads of fun today. You get me? The, the, the smaller it is, it's like, all right, I'm going to get sh- shit loads of waves. I'm just going to get as many as I can get today. On a, a, And if it's big, it's like, say if it's 25, 30 foot at Molly, we go out. I'm happy with four waves. That's me done for the day. And we just, yeah. we rotate around then. Because it, it, it's like, even that day when we were up with, with Connor, Dylan got a wave, I got a wave, and I was going back out, and I caught a rail, and I just fell off, and it was like, no, nah, that's me done, that's karma, I'm going to stop. I just One wave is enough for me on this day to to say I, I surfed one of the biggest swells that came in the west coast of Ireland. It's like, I don't need to prove myself to anybody, I just wanted to surf it for my own self, and that was it, really. So Yeah, yeah. So what the the um what would the wipeout be like on something like that? Like how how long are you under the water for? Oh, it it really depends. Now the, the worst wipeout of I've actually had at Molly was only last year, and oh, really? it was a day we shouldn't have really gone out. It was myself and Connor and Oliver, one of the boys from up north, um, and we just went out for the crack because uh, um, Connor's friend was going out windsurfing it as well. So it was a really windy day and the wind wasn't in the right direction. Um, and I told Connor, or told Connor into a few. Then we told Oliver into a few. And then Connor told me into, I think it was my first wave. And literally I fell off just at the start of it where you don't want to fall at Molly. And it just drove me so deep. And literally you know the inflatable vests like yeah we have four cartridges in them and over all the years of my life i've never had to pull one in anger at molly and i pulled yeah. three <laughs> underneath the water that day and that oh one went out. yeah so like, how long would you would have been under the water on that one then i'd say 30 40 seconds at that oh, but man. i was deep i was very oh, deep a- the minute That's I went down, time, I, yeah. The minute I pulled, went down. I pulled the first one because it, it slammed me pretty hard, and it pushed me deep. And I knew it was going deep, so I was like, "Oh fuck, oh fuck!" And <laughs> as it pushes down, you see, like I twenty five gram uh, cartridges in in my impact vest, and it blows off at thirty six anyway. So the deeper you go, the more pressure is put on your on, on the impact vest. So it kind of blows out anyway. So when I got blown right. to the bottom, I was like, "Fuck! I need to blow another one now." And I did, and straight away I felt myself coming up. But another way, I went went over the ledge again, and it just drove me straight down in in aerated water. And I was just like, I knew I was in trouble then. And I just started kind of gagging on my own breath 
because I was getting the shit kicked out of me as well. So I was like, fuck, what am I going to do here? Um, and then it started to get bright. So in the white water, I was like, ah, oh, this, this is good. And next minute, <laughs> it fucking went dark again. And I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, I'm, I'm, I'm going to die on a shitty day, <laughs> on a shitty fucking light. When we shouldn't have been out here, I'm a stupid idiot. And then I pulled the third one and literally... I, I came up about 10 seconds later then I was just like <gasps> and in fact Connor came in straight away and I was just lying on the back of the ski going fuck that I'm done I'm done I don't know I catch any more waves so we came in then yeah I suppose that's that's what people don't realise isn't it like you it's not just about holding your breath it's about holding your breath and being pummeled as well which obviously takes your breath oh, away it's like playing it's, it's like playing doing a run on a rugby field trying to tackle people with holding your breath like <laughs> that's a good way of describing it actually. <laughs> it is it's like uh, if you're playing sevens or playing something try run from one end of the pitch to the other end of the pitch and then take take a few hits on the way as well um so it's it, like people forget like you see a lot of the lads like i'll always go in after i see a, a wipeout um or even when your mates get wiped out to pick him up and he'd be like oh, yeah, i'm all right i'm all right but it's like you don't know you're all right because if you tow in and you wipe out like all you have to do is hit the water a little bit wrong and you could be pummeled and you could be out of breath and that could actually end your session, your whole session yeah, because of that wipeout. So you really have to have trust in the, your, the guy you're towing with and everything that he's going to be in straight away to get you because imagine taking a shitty wipeout and you get dr- drilled and then the next wave, you you have to take four or five other waves on the head before you get washed into the lagoon. And then your mate, your mate comes over and picks you up and goes, how was it? And you're like, I'm fucking done. <laughs> yeah. So that's happened once or twice. So, and they're like, and, and, and yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. I suppose your your job um, has kind of prepared you quite well for, obviously you were a lifeguard and stuff, but, but being in the fire brigade as well, has prepared you quite, quite well for big wave surfing. Because I'd imagine, like you said before, you know, it'd be good to know like your CPR and things like that. Do you, do you call do you call upon that training uh, quite a lot? Not really. So it's kind of it, the training. See, see, I have a degree in disaster management in emergency planning, risk assessment. So that's my degree. So even before I went into fire service, I kind of I basically did a degree to look after my fucking self. That's what I did because <laughs> I'm a disaster when it comes to this shit. Um, and <laughs> So when I got into the fire brigade, it was like they start, started doing the I, – I was an EMT anyway, so I got bumped up to a paramedic. Um, in the fire brigade, you learn how to put wet stuff on hot stuff. It's not that hard. Like firemen, is, like it's not that hard to do, lads. <laughs> and we climb up ladders <laughs> sometimes. Um, but there is, there is other things that you learn. But I, what I learned in my college degree and when in life saving, it, it's all about being prepared – and like we made so many mistakes, and from those mistakes, like from my degree, it was like right, let's mitigate it the next time it happens. So when we made mistakes, we sat down and we said, right, I don't want that to happen again. And that's basically how the club came about. We were surfing a day at the cliffs. I wiped out. I got washed in under the cliffs. It was fucking maxing out. White water across the bay. I had to leave my gear and I had to swim out. I was swimming for literally forty minutes to try and save my life to get out because none of the skis could get in. And the only reason the skis couldn't come in because we hadn't done a rescue uh, jet ski course on them. We didn't know what they were capable of. So when we came in, it was like, right, we sat in a pub, all feeling sorry for ourselves, drinking Guinness. And it was like, right, let's get fucking prepared. So I knew uh, Glenn Ovens from over in Wales. He, I'd, I'd um, met him when I was doing the Rancia training, the rescue boat training over in Wales. And he had a ski, and I was like, that, that looks cool. How is that in, in the water? And he's like, oh, it's the best fucking craft. So I knew he had experience in training people on it. So I was like, got on to Glenn. I was like, Glenn, would you want to come over? And Glenn was a surfer as well. I was like, all right, we'll do a bit of, I'll t- we'll, we'll teach you towing, or we'll bring you towing if you teach us surfing. So about 12 of us actually did the course at, at, at the start. And what we learned from that is, it, it, it basically made us all who we are today um learning what the skis can do how how we can go in and it's not about like that's a three-day course but then we started putting ourselves in stupid positions with the skis that we were like 
like we would never imagine ourselves going to go rescue the lads off the rocks underneath the cliffs of, of Moher or even helping the Coast Guard out and, and rescues and stuff like that. So it was like, it, it's, it's one of those things that you, you learned from, you learn from your mistakes. And that's one of the videos we have on our club is mistakes made lessons learned. So yeah, it, it's one of those things that if you fuck up, it's not about brushing it under the, the, the carpet and saying, Oh Jesus, I don't want anyone to ever find out about that ever again. It's about admitting to your, your problems. So yeah. Yeah. And learning from them, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. So what, what training would you have to do? Obviously you've got to do training for your job and everything like that. So you obviously have a yeah. ability of fitness. What additional training do you have to do to be surfing those big waves? I'll be honest. I do nothing. <laughs> I just surf. <laughs> I, I do it. And I, 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 I see these lads going, oh, I go to the gym and I have the diet. I have, this, and I'm looking, I'm going, I do fuck all. <laughs> I actually, yeah. Uh, I go surf my longboard. That's all I do. And I go for a walk. But like, remember, I grew up a competitive swimmer. So like, I have a base level of fitness, a bib above what normal people would have. So yeah. they wouldn't have that. So like, I don't go to the gym. I haven't been in the gym in fucking, fucking five years. And if I did, it was in there five years ago, I took the, I opened the wrong door, basically. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, like I, I would go for a little jog down along the coast if it's not like there's a lovely run, a 5k run that I do. As I said, I've gotten, gotten into d- doing walking now, but that's the most of exercise I do is walk. <laughs> um, I know I'm shooting myself in the foot now because I'll probably drown next year and <laughs> people will be listening to this going, yeah, he drowned because he did nothing. Um, but it's about <laughs> getting out in the ocean and swimming. Um, I do a bit of swimming and a bit of free, not free diving, I just snorkel and yeah. That's it. I won't lie. I won't say I have a massive diet and, and I go to the gym twice a week. I've got two kids here. That is, that's enough exercise for me at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> is your wife sat next to you? She's going to be going, you lying bastard. You know? oh, <laughs> well, she, 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 she'd fucking agree with me. Like she, she goes, I'm a lazy bastard. Like you ask <laughs> any of my friends, what's, what's my favorite food? It's Supermax cheeseburgers. Like, come on. <laughs> so... Yeah, but like a lot of things I have, like I am very comfortable in my own mind and my own body. And that's what you need for big wave surfing is be comfortable with what your body can be put through. Yeah. Yeah. You understand me there? So I know if I haven't, if I haven't surfed in three months and I'm going up to Mully and I'm going, oh, what am I doing? I know what my body's able for. So I'm looking at it and going, oh, it's 30 foot. Yeah, grand. Is there a chance I'm going to fall? No, there isn't. If I do fall, am I going to be okay? Who's driving me? Fanon, yeah, he'll be in. He'll, he'll get me straight away. So it's kind of like weighing up and it's like my brain, I, I, I've trained my brain over the many years to basically overcome what my body can do. So your brain yeah. is more powerful than any muscle in your body. If you, yeah. if, you, if, you, if you understand what I'm trying to say, it's like yeah. you, your muscles depend on your, your brain to feed it with oxygen. So at the end of the day, if you think... Yeah, I'm good. And just, it's like the whole superhero thing. It's like lifting the car off a baby if he was trapped underneath it, blah, blah, blah. Your body is capable of the amazing things. And even when you are underwater and you, you think you're out of breath, you're not. You have another minute and a half, two minutes in your body. You just have to, your brain basically switches over to go, oh, okay, I was only kidding you there. You've got another two <laughs> minutes. Fucking relax. <laughs> so, so that kind of... Yeah, so that that's my training. My brain power is like driving three hours to Dublin for work. I sit there and I just imagine getting my ass handed to me underwater and going to my happy pay, happy place. Like like Ross Clark Jones, my happy place is on a dance floor with loads of women dancing around me. Now my <laughs> wife didn't hear me that, but yeah, yeah. You just gotta relax and enjoy it and enjoy the pounding because fuck it. You only you only get it you only get it now and again, but yeah, when you get it, it, it gives it to your good. So. Yeah, it's definitely part of the fun. Um, so can you still enjoy, you know, if you went somewhere where there's a smaller surf, do you still have as much enjoyment now as you do with a big wave surf? I have more fun on my longboard than I do big wave surf. I'll be honest with you. If I go out, I surf, if I go out on a longboard and there's me and my friends, like one of the girls, Maria Marin, and she comes out sometimes with me on the beach and me seeing her catch a wave is more enjoyable 
Like, if I'm surfing big waves and say the likes of Nick and Ollie and some of the lads that have just started towing in and I see them catch a wave and it's class, I'm just ecstatic for them. It's, I'm more excited than any wave I get, if you, yeah. if you understand. It's like, like surfing to me isn't about my surfing anymore. It's about watching my friends progress or, 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 or them enjoy it or catch a wave of their life. So yeah, uh, that's a really lovely thing, isn't it? That's, that's a good thing about surfing, I suppose, isn't it? You you can get enjoyment off of other people. Like I I have a photograph of the first time one of my sons ever stood up on a board, and that's uh, yeah, it's just a nice it. moment to have, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I like as I said, I like going out my longboard. I've got a lovely five five little, I think it's a hamburger from Ford Surfboards, and that's my favorite board at the moment. Um, and my rescue board, my lifeguard rescue board that I go out yeah. on. Um, when it's big, I just go out and I just challenge myself. It's like, can I make it out to the, to the, the back of the, the, the sets? And like one, during the summer then, when big sets come in, I go down to the lifeguards and I challenge them. Like, come on, you're coming out. And they're like looking at me going, we're not going out there. It's like, come on, you don't try. If someone gets in trouble, like that's how you push yourselves. And in fairness, I, 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 bu- you, I bully them into it, but they learn from it. That's how you learn. Is and you, what's the worst is like if you think about it. If you're going out on a beach, what's the worst that's going to happen to you? If it's big and you can't get out, you're going to get washed yeah. back in. It's as simple as that. Yeah. If you're a capable swimmer, if you're well able, even if your leash snaps, you take a few on the head and you get washed into the beach anyway. So, especially the lifeguards, they should be well able for anything on on the beach that they're lifeguarding. So, so what what would you say your mindset is then between before getting in the water and after getting out of the water? Um, if I'm surfing big waves or like Riley's, I kind of just want it to be, I want to enjoy it. Like, it's like, I want it to be safe. First off, especially at Mully, I want our backup plans. Like it's just in, in built into me to make sure that we have the right guys with us. It's like if I'm going out to surf a wave, I want to know that we have like I have the VH radio in my in in the uh, in the the ski. We have a first aid kit, have medication in case someone does break something, um, and a and a backup plan is like do we have a spotter on the top of the cliffs or or at the top of the headland at Mully if something does go wrong, how fast can we get to the hospital? Yeah, that's kind of going through my mind at the start of most sessions, and it's just kind of reminding lads right if shit happens hits the fan. This is what we'll do, and a lot of the lads like that because um, it just reinforces what what we're doing, kind of like out there. Um, as I said, yeah. it's kind of an attitude some people have is like, "Ah, should we worry about it when it happens?" And it's like sometimes that's how people's lives are lost is because you haven't done the simplest thing to mitigate a problem. Um, so. Yeah, when I go out, yeah, that, that's it's about right. We're going out. How am I going to be safe? Yeah. So how how many times a year do you actually get out in in large in those big waves at Mali? We're gonna we're gonna scrap this year because <laughs> it's only been one <laughs> yeah. last winter, and it was basically on a normal year. Yeah, <laughs> on a normal year, it depends on how many times it breaks. So I'd usually just try and get up when. Um, when I see maybe seven, eight meters at 15, 16, 17 seconds. Um, okay. Anything less in the period, it'd be the paddlers be all on that. But like, I, I don't really want to paddle, but I, I sometimes I go up and I just do safety. But um, yeah, uh, to answer your question, it's, it's hard within the years. Like one year, I remember from September till December, we were, I was up there seven, eight times before like right. se- proper sessions. And then the following year we didn't, we surfed it once. I'd say the, the lads have surfed it a couple of times this year now, five or six times, seven or eight times, I'd say, um, pre uh, the lads that live locally around there. Um, but uh, I've only been up there once this year and that was for that, that session that Rebel did with Connor. So is that, is there the there best time of year to surf that, that area? Um, yeah. Oh, the, yeah, October, November. October, November would be the time for those kind of the northwesterly swells that kind of hook into uh, Bundoran Bay. Um, 
But as I said, you could you could get there for October, November, and not get anything. It it is it isn't about coming over and scoring for a weekend. It's basically you have to suffer like the rest of us here, um, and live here for a while to to get those kind of s- sessions. Sorry, do you get to surf other places then? Uh, do you, sorry, what I mean is, do you go other type of surfing more than you get to surf those big types of? Uh, big oh, hundred percent. Yeah, I longboard more than I do anything else. Yeah, yeah, uh, I longboard all the time. Like normally, not not in the COVID time, but I longboard. I sh- uh, surf the five five. Um, oh yeah, as much as I can. But as I said, yeah, longboard and rescue board is what I surf nearly. Yeah. 90% of the time and then when it gets big I get I go out I'll, when Riley's breaks as well I'll try and go down and paddle there but that's gotten so busy that I don't even bother anymore to paddle it Um, I just I, I feel like it's getting so busy with bodyboarders and surfers there that it's like right lads you can have all the ways you want but when it gets to 6 to 8 foot I'm coming and I'm towing it and yeah. I don't care <laughs> I, and, and, and I'm only going to catch 4 or 5 waves anyway so yeah. it's not as if I'm robbing waves off. And people see that with jet skis. They're like, oh, you're towing in. It's like, I'm only catching five or six waves in my whole session. Yeah. Whereas the bodyboarders or the, some of the surfers would be catching 10 waves, not 15. So it's like, we're only going for the big ones that are, re, are, are nearly impossible to catch anyway for a, a bodyboarder or a surfer. So, yeah. I think that I think that's an interesting side because I think a lot of people think once they see you surfing big waves they think oh he only surfs big waves now that's it he doesn't bother with you know no going no no no, no 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 i'm a small I'm a, I'm a i'm a i'm a any kind of wave guy you know yeah yeah if it's yeah so um i suppose we better mention that amazing wave that you caught at, at mully would you is that the is that the best wave of your life the one it was on like the the red bull covered it yeah, which one <laughs> there's a few <laughs> Yeah, there's there's one one particular one where you were really surprised that you were uh, that that was you in the picture, and it's an absolutely beautiful yeah, XXL nomination. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful yeah. green barrel, and it's just stunning. And um, I yeah, I think I think you mentioned on the on the Red Bull um, when they covered it that, that you didn't even like they showed you the picture of it, and you're like, who's that? And like, that that's you. <laughs> yeah. That was one of my favorite. It was one of the best ways I've ever got out there. But in my memory, it's not the best wave I've had. I've had like just as good a waves with no pictures being taken of other waves. Um, I try every year my damnedest to get a stupid wave, and I use like like that was a stupid wave. If you if you look at it, and you go, oh Jesus Christ, that's stupid. Um, and last year or two years ago, I won um, the ride of the year for um, uh, one of the barrels I got up at Molly. Um, it was two years ago, I think it was. I got it in the Doolin Film Fest. Um, and there's a, 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 uh, every I, I'd say every year from there, I've got some some of the biggest barrels barrel I've ever surfed or it, it, it surfed in Europe, hands down. Um, monster things, monsters. They are, they look absolutely beautiful. Like it's scary as hell, but absolutely stunning. Yeah, but like it's just the progression is getting better. Like with Connor and Garod and all the boys up there now, it's like everybody is pushing. And like they're they're living up there, so they're getting on it all the time now. Um, I'm getting none of it. So I like I'm on the way out. I know that. Like it's 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 like when we started, it was. Uh, Dave Blount and all the boys and John McCarthy and Ferg and all the boys and like I understand like I've surfed it for the last 10 years now going on um, and you have Mike Hamilton, Paul O'Kane and, and Richie Fish, Gabe Davis like they were all there when I was surfing I surfed in the competition against them and like now you've got the Connors and the Garodes and everything stepping it up and coming up and paddling stupid big waves and, and it, it's just a, a rite of passage just like they're going to be taking over now and we're going to be looking at them wishing we had we were getting barrels like them but as i said we families and and, and that's what happens when you get kids your whole perspective changes kind of 
Um, it's not changing. Like my perspective hasn't really changed. I'd still, my wife knows that if there's a swell at Mully that I can go to, I'm gone and I'll go up and I'll enjoy myself. Um, but I don't miss it. Like this year yeah. with COVID, I was like, I get a bit of FOMO, but it's like, ah, there'll always be another day next year. There's going to be the best day ever. So yeah. when you when your friends ring and you go, oh, it's going to be the best day ever, and it always turns out that it's a shit day anyway, and <laughs> and and your friends are like, oh yeah, yeah, we tr- we dr- we went to one spot and we, we were going to get in there, but then we drove to twelve other spots and then came back and surfed that one spot, and it was shit anyway. So and you're, I was like, gee, thank God I didn't take fucking work off for that. So <laughs> so. You get that thing, don't you? I mean, when 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 everyone's younger, you get that thing, and they, your friends are going to you. Oh, you missed the best surf ever! And as they yeah. get older, they go, "Yeah, do you know what? You're glad you stayed at home. It was shit anyway." <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> like, it's, it, there's always going to be a better day every t- yeah. every day, and there's always going to be a better wave. Someone's always going to surf a bigger wave than you. There's always going to be a bigger fish caught, as I say. So yeah, yeah. it's just about getting out and enjoying it for what it is, and it's just surfing. So. Yeah, so that what you were saying about all the people you surf with, that brings me on to another question, which was who inspired you when you were younger to, you know, to make those moves into surfing or just in general? Um into surfing bigger waves, is it? Yeah, well, into surfing and then into surfing bigger waves, yeah. I suppose like my friends with lifeguards, like Oshin and Neil and all the boys I was lifeguarding with were kind of surfers. Like Oshin grew up um a sur- like his dad Brendy was a, a, a surfer as well. So I kind of got aboard off him and kind of was out surfing with him in the winter times as well. Um, and that, then it, comp- it progressed to like when I went out to the cliffs, I was watching Tom Doidge, uh, Steve Thomas, um, Saul Harvey, all those kind of boys out there fucking pushing it. Um, this is back when there was no videos. There was no nothing. Um, um, and John McCarthy, Dave Blount, all those boys out there. Um, and Mikey and Paul were coming down from the north. And then, like, I surfed the cliffs for four or five years before I even went to Mully. And then when I went to Mully, just like, we, you know, the, the billabong and towing contest that we had at Mullockmore, that was on a fucking, a, a brilliant swell. Um, but that was the second time I ever surfed Mully. The first time I ever surfed Mully was the day before the competition. And it changed my life altogether because all I'd ever surfed was big right-handers and I can't surf right-handers. So we'll, we'll just put it, it's big and I can't surf and I can't surf right-handers anyway. Um, but there's me then letting go on a rope on a giant left-hander and going, oh my fucking God, this is, fu- I can see things. I can actually fucking, and you'll see it in some of the pictures in the competition. Like my hands are in the air when they shouldn't be in the fucking air. And <laughs> like the lads were going, why are you claiming it? I was like, I wasn't claiming. I was just fucking ecstatic for what I could see and what I was doing. Um, and it was, it was, and that was it. That fucking, that first session up at Mully, the first day and the competition just fucking changed my life altogether. It was just like. Big fucking left-handers. That's what I fucking want. And that's why Molly kind of is always my drop the hat and I get up there as much as I can. Um, the cliffs is a different ball game altogether. Like we towed it for years and then the paddle set, it paddle t- like era came in, the Ferg and all the boys out there. And that kind of, once they were paddling there, you couldn't really tow around them. Well, where at Molly you can. Um, um, so we kind of, didn't tow the cliffs for years on end. And then there wasn't many people going out on the bigger days at, at Mully. And I've gone out, of, I've only gone out a handful, a few times now to, to the cliffs towing. And even at the moment, there'd be lads going, Oh, we're going to go out. And like, I don't really want to go out with people that don't know what they're doing out there because it is one of the sketchiest places in the world to drive yeah. a ski to go rescue somebody. Like I've driven at Nazare. Nazare is hands down the sketchiest place I've ever driven a fucking ski. But the cliffs is even scarier once it's big and it, you're inside there because there's rocks sticking up everywhere. If you fuck up, you are fucked. You are literally <laughs> on fucking rocks underneath 700 foot of cliffs where no one is fucking coming to rescue you. Whereas <laughs> if you fuck up at Nazare, you're getting washed onto a beach. Yeah. So... um. Yeah, that place scares the shit out of me. <laughs> the cliffs. Yeah. 
Yeah. And and knowledge is because I have ended up there. I've seen skis lost there. I fucking swim in after skis that have been washed up there. It's fucking, I could tell you some stories that have never passed people's lips about the cliffs and things happening out there. And it's just by knowledge and by it happening to people around me and things happening that I see other people going, yeah, yeah, we're going out to tow the cliffs. And I'm looking at them going, don't fucking do yeah. it. Please don't fucking do it unless you're going to go out there on a, on a six, to, six to eight foot day and practice because going out there on a 30 foot day is just fucking lunacy, lunacy, especially if you're going out and you've never done it before or you've never trained with your partner or if you, you oh, yeah, so many variables to go wrong out there. It, it, it just, I lose sleep from it. <laughs> yeah. Would you say that, um, like, uh, social media then has changed big wave surfing in what way do you think um you know more people getting involved in it more people trying it who aren't ready to try it or shouldn't really be out there doing it not really because the waves they 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 rule the roost out there if you're not fucking able for it one wave in the head is going to fucking sort you out you're going to go fuck that i don't want anything to do with it um (laughs) And I've seen it many times. And like, as I said, if someone wants to try it, they like, in fairness, they get on to me and say, oh, can we try a fucking way, blah, blah, blah. And I, I go, yeah, like, <laughs> it happened there recently. Um, ben Large, a young lad from Scotland, a 14-year-old, um, <laughs> came over and he was, they were doing a documentary on him and he wanted to surf big waves. And I was like, yeah, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll go through this, the life-saving stuff and jet ski stuff and we'll do a bit of training and we might get out and tow you into like something six to eight foot that he's been out in before. And I was like, well, I'm, what I'm definitely not going to do with you is fucking bring it to Molly and tow you into a fucking 40 foot wave. Um, and he's like, oh yeah, 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 no problem. So I did a bit of training with him and all that. But um, then while they were here, a fucking session came up at Molly. So I was like, I went to him and I said, listen, Ben, jump into the fucking car with me. Leave the fucking camera crew behind. Don't tell him. And I'll, you can come up and you can watch from the headland. You can be our comms and you can see what a big session is all about to see if you're interested. Brought him up. Fucking, he told his dad and then his dad told the fucking production company, fuckers arrived up. Um, they were trying to tell us what, I was like, listen, this is this is not what I wanted. I wanted us to come up and just enjoy ourselves. So I kind of shooed them away from the, the slipway going, right. We brought, Ben got lucky. There was a space in the scheme. We brought him out. Um, and I was like, right, you sit there with Dylan and you fucking just watch from the, the I'm going to go out and tow a few of the lads and tow with the lads and you watch and see what it's all about. Um, I remember catching the wave. Did I catch a wave? No, I just towed Fanon into wave and I'm driving back out and I see this fucking small figure on a fucking 40 foot wave and I'm going, fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> And I was like, don't fall off. Please don't fall off. Um, and fucking Dylan had gone, what do you think? Do you want a wave? And he goes, yeah, yeah, I'll take a wave. And fucking Dylan drags him out and fucking fu- slots him onto him. And no better guy because Dylan knows the waves fucking by heart, anything that comes in there. Um, but I told him I was never going to tow him into a wave that day. And fucking, there he goes. There's fucking Ben on a fucking 14-year-old on a fucking 40-foot wave. And I'm going, fucking hell, don't fall off, don't die. And in fairness, he fucking surfed it like a champ and got a fucking wave of his life. And uh, oh, I just remember driving wow. out straight, ba- basically driving straight out at him going, oh, my fucking God. I yeah. bet he and was it, bouncing off the walls for weeks after uh, that. Oh, uh, yeah. The, the Imagine best wave of his life, hands old, down. Yeah. How cool yeah. is that kid going to be in school? <laughs> oh, fucking. His, his, his name is Ben Large. Like... I thought I was taking the piss when he said, like, he was like, ben large. I'm, a, I'm a big, wave, a large wave surfer. I was like, fuck it, hell. Yeah. Well, he's a, he's a really nice kid. And, uh, yeah, he wanted to learn as well. So, yeah, and he, it wasn't just about, it was like driving the ski and how to do the rescue stuff. So, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. So, so, um, so we'll, what we'll do is we'll, we'll start to, we'll start to wrap up a little bit. So we've got a couple cool. more questions for you. Um, yeah. if, if, uh, so like me and Peter Longboarders, if, uh, if Longboarders were planning a trip to Ireland, where would you suggest would be the best place to go and surf? Dublin. Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do I have to answer honestly? <laughs> um, 
Um, if, long, if, if, longer, if long borders were coming to Ireland, uh, Lehinch and Bundorn and Strand Hill. Right. They'd be the three right. spots to go to. Yeah, you get loads yeah. of waves. We definitely remember that. <laughs> but Dublin, um, definitely Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, there's a mean there's a mean ferry wave that comes in once every three days so <laughs> you'd be laughing you'd be laughing lads <laughs> so have you have you got anything planned for the future um i currently i'm working with a, a good friend of mine paul mcnally on a rescue jet ski course um basically working with rescue tree international um uh, i teach uh, swift water rescue in in my job and with paul so we're kind of trying to blend jet ski rescue into river rescue and sea rescue to do a course for the firemen, the, the police, the the, the uh, lifeguards. Um, just got, like I know there's courses out there, but in Ireland there is no courses. Like the Irish Toast Surf Rescue, we've been teaching the surfers as best we can. Like I've been teaching it for years. Um, even going to Nazare teaching, I've gone to Hawaii learning and teaching um but it's just trying to get a proper course up and running that uh, we can certify internationally to say if you want to be a fucking shit hot in a river rescue on a jet ski because as i said the jet skis have a really bad negative uh persona about them because they're so easy to get and to buy like over in england there's licensing and you have to have a license and you have to have been a club to launch in a lot of places, but in Ireland it's not. It's like we have, we're having massive problems at the moment of trying to ban the jet ski from our local beaches where we train. Yeah, like completely right. ban them. And I'm just looking yeah. and I'm going. There's never been a complaint made against any jet ski on any of these beaches. Why are you banning them? And it's just the a, a, a bay that local swimmers use and life saving cl- cl- uh, clubs use, and they just want to get rid of a different craft. And it's like why like we don't cause trouble, so why are you trying to ban it? They're just trying to get, get one get rid of one craft at a time, I can see. But um yeah, um that's what I'm trying to at the moment and basically raise a family. That's cool. That's, what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. that's the hardest bit. <laughs> that that is the hardest bit. But I, yeah. I'm also trying to move from Dublin Fire Brigade down to Limerick Fire Brigade. So that's that's if that happens by the end of the year, I'll be very happy with that because it, it'll it shave off three hours of uh, driving commute for me. So Yeah. Uh, um, and I suppose we probably – I can't remember if you've answered it because I've just been laughing too much for a lot of this. <laughs> um, uh, the um, question would be, what's the biggest and the best wave that you think you've surfed in your life, seeing as you've surfed like Nazare, Hawaii, or wherever, you know, all the places you've been? Would oh, I know you said – Mullock Moor yeah. um, two years ago. Was that the biggest and the best? It would be the scariest one I've surfed because I thought <laughs> the whole fucking thing was going to land on my head every every two <laughs> seconds. Um, yeah, that'd be like, just looking back on the footage of it, it's just like, fuck in hell. And even <laughs> my friend Ollie was sitting on the, uh, Ollie Hagerty was sitting on the, uh, on a ski looking down into the barrel going, all, he was just praying that I was going to make every chandelier that landed on my head. Um, um, yeah, that, that that wave still sticks out to me, and I, I I do go back and I look at it, and hats off to Fanon for fucking picking it for me and towing me in like a champ. Um, yeah, it was fucking that 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 sticks out in my head. It, like that wave back in ten years, like the, the XXL one, it was a good wave, but it doesn't it doesn't stick out in my memory. The picture does now. Every time I look at it, I go, fuck me, that was class. But yeah. it doesn't really. Um, and the fact that that wave that I surfed, it was the same day that one of our friends, John, uh, f- uh, snapped his femur. And we ended up basically half the session. I had to look after John. We had to bring him in, get the ambulance. We had to fucking sort him out. And he, nearly, you know, he nearly lost his leg, if not his life, after all the stuff we had, you know, had done previous um and basically i just gone back out after being like thinking my session was all done and dusted went back out and fanon told me into that wave that just fucking i was just like well that's karma for you <laughs> so, yeah yeah well we we really hope you stay safe peter and and you get 
you know all the waves that you want so just before you go do you want to uh just tell our listeners where's the best place to find you and um and look at your stuff yeah if you just it, on instagram pedro2468 um you may ask why pedro and it's because one of my really good friends heber used to call me pedro when i was uh younger um right. which is spanish for dog so pedro <laughs> was my nickname around here so pedro2468 because I, I, I couldn't think of anything else better uh, on Instagram. <laughs> and if you look up uh, the Irish Toe Surf Rescue Club, you will see a lot of uh, other stuff that we're kind of trying to promote water safety on the west coast of Ireland with uh, local community defibs and training up lads to basically look after themselves when they go out in the water. So they're not, not to rely on the Coast Guard and all that. So, yeah, that's where, the stuff where you can find me. We, we wish you all the, all the success of all that. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for listening to me for the last, what is it, hour? <laughs> Shite on. Oh, it's, it's been so funny. We've been laughing so much. Uh, the Irish can swear really, really well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, just, I'm surprised being Irish, you didn't actually drop the C-bomb on there. On there. So, uh, <laughs> what the Damn, thanks for that, Peter. Oh, my God. What a legend. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> has a way with words <laughs> yeah, absolutely brilliant um like some of those things of like the massive waves he's been surfing like you yeah. can see pictures on the internet and there's video out there of it it's just absolutely insane and places he was telling us about surfing and some of those stories were absolutely terrifying <laughs> yeah i mean he's got some amazing stories and yeah well what an absolute incredible guy. What can you say about him? He's, he's just brilliant, isn't he, you know? <laughs> yeah, great. And hopefully one day we get to go over there and just, even if we just go out on a jet ski and see like those waves. We're definitely not going to end up riding one. So, yeah. <laughs> God, no. <laughs> that little kid. Yeah. You want to come and have a look? Oh, fuck. What's he doing? Fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, amazing guy. Really, really genuinely lovely bloke. Like we were chatting to him a little bit before and afterwards as well, and he he's so funny. Yeah, so funny. Um, yeah, so we hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Uh, don't forget to go and like and subscribe on all the usuals. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.